Um, what we'd like to do now is go over to uh, Tatiana Filevska. Tatiana is the uh, creative director at the Ukrainian Institute. Uh, Tatiana, thank you for joining us. Hi, Simon. Hi, everyone. Nice to be with you. And um, um, well, I'm 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 um, based in Kiev now, so I can say that the weather here is much better than in Lviv. Uh, there is no rain, and it's a, another warm autumn evening in in Ukraine, and hopefully it will also be peaceful without another rocket attack from Russia. Uh, so I was asked to to talk to talk more about the context and uh, how the Ukrainian cultural scene is um, uh, at the moment, and I think that. Um, even from the moment uh, when we were starting to work on the paper, up until now, things have changed because the situation is so dynamic. There are so many changes that can happen very quickly uh, and cultural sphere is the one to react very um, very quickly, um, again, um, to anything that's happening, to any new um, ch ch uh, challenges and uh, conditions. Uh, and uh, we really have to um, to follow all <clears throat> what is happening and what are the uh, the challenges and the needs. Uh, so for us uh, in 2022, um, a lot has changed, but it was not something new. I mean, the war was not something new because the war in Ukraine has started in 2014 when Russia first occupied Crimea and started the war in, in the east of Ukraine in Don, Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. Um, so I can, um, I'm pretty sure that uh, more or less everyone in Ukraine <clears throat> knew um, that uh, what, the, what war was, even if uh, these, uh, uh, these people or institution were from west of Ukraine were actually the um, the front line was very far from. Um, but of course, the full full scale invasion of Russia and from the moment when Russian rockets could hit anywhere in Ukraine and there was no safe place in Ukraine has influenced and changed um, uh, the situation for every person in Ukraine. So the first thing that happened is the relocation when millions of people, including thousands of creative people, have traveled elsewhere in Ukraine, losing their homes or traveling uh, outside of Ukraine to find themselves safer places. So it uh, caused uh, a big gap between experiences that people uh, started to have after the full the full scale invasion started. And as a, as a Ukrainian society, we feel that this gap between different experiences is just uh, getting bigger. So between those people who stayed and those who left, between those who are at the front line and not. So the, um, the general situation in society, including arts, is that different of experiences that we are going through. Um, and of course, for art institution institutions as such, um, this uh, teams that were torn apart for for quite a long time uh, for many, many uh, experts and uh, um, professionals who had to leave and are outside of Ukrainian uh, community, cultural community is one of the largest uh, challenges and the biggest challenges uh, that we have to go through. I will not uh, stop here on the cultural damages caused by this war and I will not you know, give you again the the numbers uh, of um, of the cultural losses of the destroyed uh, heritage sites, museums, libraries. Uh, this number is still growing every day, um, and of course, this uh, this feeling of fragility uh, of cultural um, heritage uh, is something that we can feel and see and observe every day. Uh, and the need to preserve and the need to hide uh, and uh, protect cultural heritage is uh, is a number one issue for um, each and every Ukrainian. Um, in our international relationship with different partners, partners uh, outside of Ukraine, we have gone through a, also a very dynamic change. Uh, first, we saw uh, this very active, very... Um, 
uh, immediate response that was um, a response and a, a way to show the solidarity with Ukraine and Ukrainian culture. And we know that almost every institution in Europe and in America uh, has done something to support Ukraine and has done something to show Ukraine and showcase Ukrainian culture. Uh, as we call it, Ukraine, the world has discovered Ukraine, and we really hope that this immediate discovery will um, last and will sustain in a longer interest and in a deeper conversation and in, in a um, um, sustainable partnership. Um, so we we saw and felt that this immediate interest needed um, also a lot of effort from both sides to continue this conversation, to continue collaboration. And we understand that uh, there is a lot of homework that has to be done from Ukrainian side, and uh, I think many of uh, of the colleagues are doing um, all they can and even more to uh, provide with all the requested information and partnership from our side. Uh, and uh, um, we we hope that these corporations that have started as something uh, one off will uh, continue as uh, as a lasting and. Um, um, partnership that has uh, you know interest on both sides and will help open what ukraine has to give to the world and share um and uh it's also a matter of security for us because culture is one of the targets in this war and for us it's crucial to to be able to voice ourselves and to explain how we feel and how we go through this experience and what this situation and the history of Ukraine and Ukraine and Russian relationship looks like from our side, because uh, for many decades and centuries, the world was not able to hear Ukraine. The world has heard only the story told uh, through the uh, lens of Moscow and through the Russian lens as such. Um, and for us, it's crucial to give our history through our uh, eyes, through our perspective. Uh, it's also the, a matter of the agency that Ukrainians are fighting for at the moment for our um, ability to, to speak for ourselves. Um, since the full-scale full scale invasion, we have been... Um, well, pleasantly challenged by many col collaborations and cooperations with uh, major institutions, with different institutions all over the world. Um, and we can say that there are very successful ex um, um, cases and experiences so with the uh, exhibitions that were shown uh, around, for example, European museums or um, uh, Ukrainian um, Ukrainian participation in large events like, like the Venice Biennial, for example, or um, our um, ongoing cooperation with the European Biennial Manifesto, which is uh, uh, growing and will shortly be uh, able to announce uh, what our cooperation will look like. Um, we also um, understand that um, the, the range of topics that we want to, uh, to to talk about with the world and we want to suggest uh, are the topics that are both interesting for Ukraine and the rest of the world. Um, so at the moment in Ukraine, uh, there are issues, of course, that are locally um, um locally important, such as cultural heritage product, uh, protection or uh, working in the time of crisis, but there are also issues that are relevant for the rest of the world, uh, as, um, uh, for example, decolonization, which is the major issue, and Ukraine has just joined this movement, uh, or, for example, um, issues of uh, protection of environment and ecology. Um, so we are working to, uh, to build these conversations with the world on the jointly um, important uh, uh, topics from, from all sides. Um, 
of course, uh, the um, the situation is not clear and we don't know when the war will be over and when we can come back, if we ever are able to come back to work as usual or life as usual. Uh, we really don't know what that means at the moment. And, you know, if, if there is a, any uh, time when we will all have, you know, another normal life, um, whatever that meant. But I have to tell you that the the word future that I see in the title of this particular conference is um, um, actually um, a title or word that uh, is part of the of many programs and projects that we we've been having for the last two years, and I think it's a good sign and it gives us um, confidence that no matter what is happening, no matter what context is given us and uh, as we see life is very generous to give us lemons so we have to make a lot of lemonade out of it um but uh, we always trying to think about the future and building it this future um so we are working on a lot of plans uh, i have to tell you that uh, we have um plans for up until 2030. Uh, I mean, like really planning projects uh, in the next uh, couple of years. Uh, so we are being pos positive and thinking uh, about a future. Um, and um, in particular, I can tell you that we are working with, on this um, big project on the coloniality that will be uh, presented uh, next year but we have already started the the internal work and the conversation it will be a guide on the coloniality that we are developing together with the british council uh and uh, icom ukraine and uk and the museum association in the uk uh, and it will help different institutions museums art institutions education institutions to work with ukrainian heritage and to decolonize uh, um, uh, our views on what we consider to be Ukrainian heritage and how to work with this heritage, how to define it, identify, how to exhibit, how to um, research it, and how to uh, actually work with it. Um, and um, um, we hope to have more, more um, um, also more uh, deeper conversations with uh, uh, countries where we now have our offices, and Volodymyr didn't mention it, but we have opened uh, representative offices in Berlin and in Paris this year. So we'll be working a lot with our teams uh, on site in these countries to develop more uh, Ukrainian, uh, German, Ukrainian, French um, col collaborations uh, in the coming years. Um, and uh, I'm sure um, United States was also will also be in the in the focus. And uh, um, interestingly, I think yesterday we had four or five Ukrainian events in New York only in one uh, evening. I'm not saying that they were all Ukrainian Institute events, but uh, Ukrainian cultural events. Uh, we were only um, um, co-organizers of one of the conversation uh, conversations that happened in MoMA with Ukrainian museum directors, Olesa so ostrovska Luta and Yulia Vaganova. But uh, uh, of course, a lot is happening in the United States as well. Um, so um, summing up, the context is challenging. It's um, changing quite um, uh, quickly, quite rapidly. Uh, we have lots of difficulties and challenges we have to, to face and we have to deal with. But we are optimistic, we're hardworking, and we're looking for future. And I will stop there. Thank you. Tatiana, thank you so much. Uh, it gives a great uh, framework and context for the conversation we're having.